Thank you. Please be seated. You know, only those that are blood bought will be there. Because they are the only people that, uh, whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and there will be a roll call up there, and I'll be there. No modernist will be in heaven. No religious person will ever be called there. No person who would not believe in salvation by grace through faith will ever be there. Even some of those that doubt the election of God will not be there. Now that's quite uh, strong, isn't it? Ngayon po ibuksan natin ang ating mga Biblia sa aklat ng Apokalipse. Revelation. I would like us to read in chapter 3, beginning from verse number 14 on down to verse number 16 of Revelation chapter 3. You know that the name of the book is Revelation. In the Revelations. Mm. Eh? Revelation. Verse number 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, This thing said the Amen, the faithful, and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou art cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm. And neither cold nor hot. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I am rich. And increased with goods. And have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched. And miserable. Poor. Blind. And naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke, in chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Shall we pray? Our gracious God in heaven, thank you again for thy word tonight. For uh, reminding us that God, that we should be the kind of Christians that will be pleasing to your sight. That we should not just be satisfied being a medi mediocre insincere half-baked and many other descriptions that uh, would uh, make us to be uh, half Christians and half something else Lord bless thy word tonight and we also pray for those who might be here who do not have that assurance of eternal life and Lord, we pray for them that they may see themselves, that they need Jesus. They need to be saved tonight. May your spirit be the one to speak and to persuade the hearts of people. That they might uh, go all the way through in their Christianity. We ask these things in Christ's name and for his sake alone. Amen. Well, I believe, my friend, that the text that we have just read gives us a description of the present-day Christianity. If you are going to study carefully the seven churches recorded in the book of Revelation, each of this church, although they were real church then, they were real local congregations then and they were called according to the place where they were located 
But I believe that the Holy Spirit of God has so inspired that these churches should be listed here, although not in a chronological arrangement, but in order to describe to us the condition of Christianity from the time of our Lord Jesus Christ up to this present time. Now you will notice that the Lord Jesus Christ is addressing the church at Laodicea. Dito sa bagay ito, ang kanya kinakausap yung pastor doon sa Laodicea. And the name Laodicea means the last time. I believe that we are living in the last time as far as the economy of grace is concerned. The last days, that is. And the characteristic of the last days, my friend, as far as the church is concerned, is that of spiritual declension. Apostasy. Half-heartedness. Insincerity. Compromises. Many people who call themselves Christians today are not really serious of their Christianity. Perhaps they just want to uh, fulfill the mechanics of their religion just to make it appear that they are Christians. But they are not really deep Christians that they should. They are shallow. They are half-baked. They are not well uh, mature well seasoned by the grace of God that is why that is the characteristic of the Laodicean age but I thank God that the lighthouse Bible Baptist Church still remains in the fundamental doctrines of the Bible it is my prayer that there shall never be a time when this church would lose its identity, would lose the name, would compromise with others and try to mingle our doctrines and practices with the present day religious movement. And I want you to know this, brethren, tonight that from the text that we have read, there are at least three things that are figuratively described in our text that every genuine believer in Jesus Christ should desire to have. Number one is gold tried in the fire. That is not literal. Number two is white raiment. Well, I tried to wear my white raiment here. White raiment. Number three is spiritual discernment. Yan, tatlong yan. I believe that every genuine believer in Jesus Christ desire to have these three qualities in their Christian life. And I believe, brethren, that they all stand for something that is precious. In the life of the believer. I believe that in everything that you do. You exercise commitment. Sincerity. And seriousness. I believe that when you exercise your profession. Your trade. Your work whatever. Your calling. You exercise it with the great seriousness. That is why you spend at least eight hours a day working. Because you are serious about your work. If you are not serious, then you may work today and be absent tomorrow. Then after one week, your boss will say, you are fired. In school, if you are a student in the school, you ought to be a serious student. You ought to be studying your lessons. You ought to attend your classes every day. 
unless you are bedridden that you cannot move. Because if you are not serious in your school and in your studies, when the semester or the year ends, you look at your grades and you deserve, you, you receive what you deserve. You fail. And sometimes when you fail, you blame almost everybody but yourself. You blame the teacher, you blame the school, you blame the traffic, you blame the climate, the rain, the sunshine, you blame God. But you only have to blame yourself. In business, you have to be consistent in your business. You do not operate a business of buy and sell today and something else the next day. I remember one of our members in Santa Mesa, when the Santa Mesa market was open, they put up stalls there and stores, and she opened up a jewelry store. But there were not very many people who would go there and buy jewelry. So I said, Ms. Degado, are you sure that your business is in the right place? She said, I think so. But you know, this kind of business, you do not immediately get all the customers and buy your goods. As a matter of fact, before I opened up my business here, I was ready to lose for at least one year to establish my business. So that everybody will know what I'm doing here, what I'm selling. Well, of course, the time came that uh, she began to have many clients, many customers that would buy her products there. She was serious about her business. In every transaction in your life, in every contract that you sign, you ought to be serious. Because when you sign your name, you put your name in stake, you know that. And I believe that you will never, never sign your name for something that is not sure. Huh? In marriage, for example, when you want to get married, what do you do? First of all, if you are a young person, you go to the uh, local civil registrar's office and apply for a marriage license. If you are not sincere, you better make up your mind. Because you will be sorry all your life. Then when you get married, you sign a contract. You put your signature there on the dotted line. You better be serious when you sign your name there. Because what will happen to you if you are not really serious? And your marriage contract is only based upon material things. I was listening to the young people during the 18th birthday of my eldest granddaughter. And of course, you cannot uh, discount the fact that they also have their own ambition. Oh, I would like to marry a man who is richer than myself. Who is more intelligent than myself. Well, you cannot guarantee that. When my mother was alive, and I was already a teenager, she told me, Ben, I would rather that you would court a domestic help in the house. Don't you ever court a woman that is more intelligent than you. Don't you ever court a girl that is more rich than you. Because if that's the case, then she will make you under desire. She will control you. She will direct you. She will roll over you. And all that. Well, partly, my mother's words were true. Huh? Sapagat yung mga kaedad ko na nag-ambition sa kanilang buhay, nag-asawa ng malaki agwat sa kanila, ngayon, anong labas nila? Katulong. Huh? They could not even say they have no authority. Sometimes, 
Young people, you have to listen to your folks. Don't you know that? They know better. Because they have already been there. While you have not been there yet. Oh, marami ko narinig sa mother ko na kapag iniisip ngayon, totoo pala eh. Hmm? Kaya nung ako'y nagtiis ng mga pag-iinsulto, paghahamak, paglalait, sabi ng nanay ko, kita mo, kung nang ligaw ka lang ng kapantay mo o mas pababa sa'yo, di magpapasakop yan sa'yo. Walang argumento yan. Subalit kapag nag-asawa ka na mas marunong sa'yo, susumbatan ka, Oy, mas marunong ata ko sa'yo. Mas malaking kinikita ko isa sa'yo. Mas maganda ko isa sa'yo. Ang tinanggalin ko pamilya ay mas higit na mahusay kaysa sa'yo. Kanya pagkaisipin natin mabuti. Ganyan eh. Kaysa pagkatapos ay magsisisi kayo, bakit ko ba pinakasalan yung taong yan? Oo, uh, huli na po. Hindi niya pwedeng burahin yung kinumpinirmahan doon. Palitan niyo ng ibang pangalan. Now, let's go back to Christianity. Listen, God wants us to be, first of all, genuine Christians. Sincere Christians. Dedicated Christians. Committed Christians. And my friend, that is what gold tried in the fire stands for. That is not really referring to a literal goal. But how can you ever find out if it is pure gold or not? Ang iba niyan, bibigyan kayo ng para mapatunayan yung tunay na ginto yan, babad niya sa suka. Ngayon, kapag umitim yung, yung gold, hindi tunay yan. Pero mayroong isang Muslim na nagtinda ng gold binabad sa suka, nagreklamo siya. Sabi niya, bakit nung binabad ko sa suka yung ginto pinagbun sa akin, nangitim? Sabi nung muslimises, fake yung suka ninyo. <laughs> Napagbintagan pa yung suka. You see? Now you would not pay a good sum of money for a jewelry that is not pure, isn't it? Diyan napakaraming taong natatanso. Di ba? Sapagat hindi lahat ng kumikintab na para ginto ay ginto. Di ba? May kasabihan niyan. All that glitters is not gold. Hindi sapagat sa unang kisap ng kita mo, wow, pure gold dyan. Baka yan ay tanso lamang na kininis ng metal palace ay eh, makintab na. Kinabukasan, iba na ang kulay niyan. But you can only prove whether gold is really pure if it goes through fire. Try it in the fire. Well, I believe, my friend, that this also speaks of your Christian faith. Your faith must be genuine. And how can you ever prove to the world that your faith is pure, your faith is genuine? It is not fake if your faith is tried. With fire. Did you know that all kinds of faith would go into trial? You remember Abraham's faith was tried. And he came out as pure gold. Daniel's faith was tried. Even though he endangered his life by being thrown into a den of lions. But he proved to the world that his faith was genuine and that his faith was able to stop the mouths of lions. The three Hebrew captives, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they believe in God during a crisis time. And they want to show to the world that their faith is like gold, genuine, even if it cost them their lives. They heard the warning, any person that would not bow down to my God shall be thrown into a furnace that is heated seven times. These three Baptist preachers, you know, they, they were not even scared of that warning. Everybody bowed down like a rice plantation being blown by the wind. 
Kakit na ba Sa bukid, kapag humahangin ang mga panin na palay, isang bumabaw yan na ganyan. At the same time. But those three Hebrew believers stood there. Eh? And they were saying, And so the authorities took them and brought them to the king and says, King, these three lighthouse Bible Baptist members would not want to bow down to your God. And so the king said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is that true? And they said, yes, sir. It is true that we did not bow down to your God. The king said, did you not know that those that would not bow down to my God shall be thrown into that big furnace, which will be heated seven times? They said, yes, sir, we know that. But our God is able to deliver us from your furnace. But even if this time God will not deliver us from your furnace, we would like to know, Mr. King, that we will never bow down to your God. What a test of faith. Huh? What a test of faith. And you know the story that when they were thrown into that fiery, fiery furnace, the men that bound them and threw them there were the ones eaten up by the fire. And when they hit the bottom of that furnace, they had a great fellowship together. They just walked around that fire there, and when the king looked, and he saw not only three, but he saw four of them. And he said, have we not cast out there three young men? He said, yes, O king, but I see four of them. And one of them is like unto the Son of God. Oh, Jesus was with them. Amen. They believed that. Their faith was like gold dried in the fire. How about us this morning, uh, tonight? Suppose uh, we are living in the days like Daniel and Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, like Abraham and Jacob, and all the patriarchs in the Old Testament whose faith were tried with trials and temptations and persecutions and many other things. Do you suppose that your faith will pass the test? Huh? Even if your faith would be tried with fire? Oh, I, I preached about faith this morning and I was able to finish my outline. Because I didn't mention to you that faith is not only able to remove mountains, but it is able to quench the power of the fires. It is able to shut up the mouths of the lions. And it is able to move the hearts of the king. It is able to give them victory over trials. But my friend, that faith must go through a test of fire. I'm afraid that in a congregation like this, the members of our church, if ever we would go through the trials of faith, I'm afraid that some of us will not pass the test. We would easily give up and say, well, not me. Not me. We sang that song, When the Roll is All of Yonder. Oh, we sang that energetically. Oh, I'll be there if the roll is all up yonder. But many times the role is called down here and you are not even there. You know? Well, you say, Pastor, that's different. Well, I understand that. I understand that. But there are times, my friend, when Christians' faith are not tested and something happens, you go along with the crowd. You go along with the current. You go along with the, the flow of the crowd. Today, in this Laodicean age, every local congregation, every movement, every fellowship is about to compromise their faith with the movement of this world. They do not want to stand anymore with the biblical faith. As a matter of fact, one of the biggest Baptist organizations in this country has now taken out the Baptist name. They do not want to use that name anymore. Because they say, you know, for so many years, that Baptist name has put us into persecution. Because people do not like the name Baptist. 
As I have said many times, you call yourself a Baptist, everybody's going to hate you, even your own loved ones. You call yourself a Christian, you'll have many friends because the Catholics are Christians also. The Mormons are Christians. The Iglesia are Christians. The, ba the uh, Seventh-day Adventists call themselves Christians. And many other groups, they call themselves Christians. And you call yourself a Christian. You have no stand whatsoever. So you have many friends. But my friend, you call yourself a Bible Baptist. Huh? You will be hated. But you have to stand. Because that is your faith. Napakarami na nag-suggest sa akin, Pastor. Siguro dadami ang memory mo dito. Dadami. Kung aalisin mo lang yung salitang Bible. Basta Baptist na lang. Sabi ko, no, because we are really Bible Baptist. O siguro naman, pwede mong pagpalitin. Alisan mo lang yung salitang Baptist, lagay mo na lang yung Bible. Sabi, you can never, never be Bible unless you are Baptist. And you can never, never be a real Baptist unless you are Bible. These two must go together, always. They cannot stand alone. You know that? Well, ako'y nalulungkot kapag mayroon tayong mga naorganisa, mga gawain na mula sa atin na hindi gaanong malalim ang pananampalataya ng ating mga preachers na pinaparoon. Kung ano-ano mga pangalan ang idiradagdag sa kanila. Ha? Kung ano-ano mga dekorasyon ang nilalagay. Kung ano-ano mga borloloy, mga palabok ang binibigay. They would not remain as fundamental Bible Baptist people. You see? Why? Because they would not want to go through the test of their faith in God. If you are going to read the history of the Baptist faith, you'll find that the early Baptists have given their lives. It cost them their lives to stand for the Baptist name. I think that is genuine. Isn't it? In this country, as I said, you call yourself a Christian, nobody's going to persecute you. Do you want to be persecuted? Be a Bible Baptist. But I believe that whatever the crisis might be, it's worth suffering. It's even worth dying for. We ought to have that kind of a faith that is likened into gold that is tried with fire. Why fire? Because my friend, there is no other test that can make that gold really pure as can be unless it goes through the fire. You might say, well, mayroon dyan mga tinatawag na acid test. But the acid test can only purify the surface. Huh? It can only take away the dross on the outside of that gold. But fire, my friend, will melt that gold and take away the dross that is not really pure gold. Yan ang ginagawa po sa atin ng ating mga persecution. Nang ating mga problema, nang ating mga crisis sa buhay natin, sinusubok ang ating pananampalataya para mawala yung bula. Ha? Ang malungkot nito, may mga kristyanong wala na yung tunay na pigment doon. Ang makikita lang natin ay bula. Have you ever tried to pour a Coca-Cola on a glass, empty glass? And you pour it suddenly, you'll find out that glass is suddenly filled up. So you stop pouring because you think it's already full. But then you stop pouring, that, uh, you know, yung uh, bubbles na it subsides down to only about that, that much. Hindi puro. Di ba? Not pure Coke or Pepsi or drink. Bula lang nakita nyo. Kung minsan sa buhay ng Kristiyano, puro bula ang nakita natin. Di ba? Nawawala yan. Parang yan ay, para yan ay, kung eh, Ano tawag doon? Cosmetics ng babae. Kapag medyo walang gaanong kagandahan ng babae, siyempre dinadadad ng cosmetics. Di ba? Nandyan ang lipsticks, nandyan ang colorete, nandyan ang foundation, nandyan ang pang ng kilay, nandyan ang kung ano mga pintura. Malaking disdrasya pag inaabot siya ng ulan sa labas. Di ba? 
Mayroon kong isang nakilala at I always uh, regard her as a real beautiful woman. Her hair huh? always looks nice if ever she comes to church. Her face, all that. She was always fixed up. Her powder, you know, her uh, cosmetics and all that. Her lips, everything is always fixed up. One time I went to their home about 6.30 in the morning. I saw her and she ran away from me. I could not recognize her. Oh, Brother Abante, don't come in, don't come in. Sabi ko, sino ba yung bakla na yun? Kala ko bakla. Yung pala ang dati kong kilala na maganda. Ano kaya mangyayari sa mga kabataan nating marami kung talagang papalabasin ang pinakanatural na kagandahan? Mayroon pa kaya matitira? Ha? Yung natural na natural. I'm afraid ay mababawasan ng konti ang kagandahan. Yung mga nagpapakuhan ng pelikula dyan na masyadong malalalim ang hukay sa kanyang muka, yan ay tinatapalan yan. Di ba? Nang foundation. Pag tinatapalan yan, papatungan ng powder, wow, makinis na makinis ang muka. Tignan mo yan at close range ng camera. Akala mo ay hinalong nga rena. Nagagawa yung puto. You see? I would rather that people would show their natural beauty than an artificial beauty. Right? Kasi masasanay ka na rin yan eh. Oo. Meron akong nakilalang isa magandang magandang binibini na ang kanyang pangasawa hindi gaano kagandahan. Pero ang kanyang katwiran, di bali, mabait naman. Subalit sa kanyang katitingin sa kanya, Maganda na rin. Ha? Wala nang ibang pinakagwapo kundi siya. Sapagat naroon ang kanyang likas na kagwapuhan. Hindi artificial. Hindi maskara. Ngayon, malapit na ang Halloween. Diba? Pagkaman sa hindi mo alamang kung ang tao may maskara o wala. Diba? Diba? All right. Pure gold tried in the fire. What kind of a faith do you have? Do you have a faith that is tried in the fires of temptations and trials and difficulties and persecutions? And because of that, you came out like gold. Ano ang sabi ni James? Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Because when that happens to you, you come out like pure gold. Diba? That's the first thing that Christians ought to desire. A pure faith that will never fall, that will never retract, that will never turn back. Because it is pure. Kahit saan mo tignan yan, pukpukin mo, kahit anong porma ang gawin mo niya, pure gold yan. Hmm? Hindi nawawala ng kilatis niyan. Hindi nababawasan niya. Then the next thing here is white raiment. You know, I'm a lover of white things. Huh? Kaya gusto kong kumain doon sa racks. Diba? Sabagat lahat ng pintura ng upuan, mesa, baay, pumbong, white. Boy, I feel like it's really very neat, very clean. It's all white. Gusto ko sa Did you know, my friend, that lahat ng kulay ng anumang bagay ay nag-fade? Diba? Kisa yan ay magandang matingkad na pula o asulo, anuman ang kulay niyan. First sight, maganda ang kulay. Talaga very attractive, lalo na ang pula. Very attractive. But sooner or later, that very attractive color will fade. But didn't you know that only white will never fade? 
Kaya ako, kapag ang kama kong hinihigaan, ay binilagay na bit ng may kulay na spread. Sabi ko, bakit? Ano bang ginagawa ng basahan na yan sa kama ko? Ha? I want my bed spread to be white. Kapag ako'y nahihiga sa aking kama na puro white ang cover, boy, I feel relaxed kahit na hindi ako naligo. I feel that I'm clean, I'm relaxed, you know, very neat. Pati ako, ang pakirandom ko, malinis na rin ako. Ganyan. Why? You go to the hospitals. If you want to guarantee that you'll be safe from infections in all kinds of uh, diseases that might be contaminated to your own uh, body. Makikita mo yan. Kung ang lahat ng ginagamit doon, pure white. Huh? Wow! You can look at that bed, that pillow, everything there. The towel is white. I remember visiting a preacher in the Bicol region. Nakalimutan ko magdalang tuwalya ko. Sabi ko, saan ba kayo naliligo dito? Sabi niya, pastor dyan lang sa likod. May gripo dyan na bumba. Magbumba ka na lang sa balye, sa kalye, sa balde. Sabi ko, nakalimutan ko yung towel ko. Mayroon ba kayong towel dito? Oh, mayroon ho kami towel dito. Nung binigay sa akin yung towel, hindi ko malama kung puti o brown o kung anong kulay. At saka, wala na yung mga tabi. Wala na yung mga tabi. <laughs> Sabi ko, hindi ba nilang salamat na lang. Ano? I always like white. Alam mo, kung hindi lang kung mapupun ng tao rito, I will dress myself in pure white suit. Huh? White suit. Even when I was a young man, I liked to wear white shoes, white shirt, white pants, white handkerchief. You know that? Because it makes me feel better. Did you know, my friend, that if ever you read the Bible, and you read some account about angels, you know what they were? You will never find the Bible that says there were two men dressed in red. They began to speak to the apostles, Why ye men of Galilee, why you stay gazing up to heaven? But the Bible tells us immediately when Jesus Christ ascended to heaven and they were still looking up to the sky, two men in white apparel. Gleaming white. Talo pa ang kinula sa Mr. Clean. They came and appeared to this man. To this example says, Why ye men of Galilee? Why are you still gazing up to heaven? And they began to recognize them as angels. Because you'll find that angels would not wear any kind of a color. When Abraham, the oldest man, was visited by three heavenly visitors. They were wearing white raiments. When Jesus Christ comes back, the Bible says that our Lord Jesus Christ will be wearing a white raiment as gleaming as the sun. So that you cannot even look with your eyes without your eyes being affected by the gleam, by the brightness of it. Just like Moses, when he came down from that Mount Sinai, came down to the people, the people had to cover their faces because they cannot look at Moses directly. He began to show forth the Shekinah glory of God. And my friend, the Shekinah glory of God is always white. You see? White is a symbol of a purity of life. I believe that it is the desire of the true believer in Jesus Christ to live a pure life in Christ. Kuminsan meron tayong mga kapatid sa pananampalataya. Hindi natin kinikritisize ang kulay ng kanilang pananamit sabagat yun ang kanilang paborito. Subalit ang kanilang buhay bilang isang mananampalataya ay hindi pure. Adulterated. 
kuminsan kung linggo ay nandito very pure ang kanilang actions but come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday hindi mo kakalam kung saan pumupunta they are more black than white as far as their Christianity is concerned ay kung ikukumpara natin ha? there are seven days in a week How many days do you live a pure life of your Christian life, Christianity than other spiritual colors? Huh? Sometimes it's sad. Mahilig tayong gumamit ng pagpapakabanal, pagpapakapuro, kung araw lamang na linggo. Bukas ang kay naroon. Ano ang ginagawa natin kung mga ordinaryong araw na linggo? Saan tayo matatagpuan? Ano ang laman ng puso natin? Ang isipan natin? Paano natin tinatrato ang ating mga kapatid sa ng palataya? Paano ninyo tinatrato ang inyong sariling magulang? Alam ba ang isang a- anak na rebelde? Ang tawag dyan ay black sheep, di ba? Sa wiki English. Kapag ang bata niya na hindi masunurin sa kanya magulang, nagbibigay ng problema sa kanya magulang, nagpapataas ng blood pressure, at lahat na. Ang tawag na dyan, that young man is a black sheep. Sooner or later, that young man is going to kill his own parents sa pagitan ng konsumisyon. Ay, paano yan, pastor? Yung anak ko naman ay kristyano yan, nagpahayag ng pananampalatay kay Kristo. Na bautismo at membro natin dito. Kasama natin dito. You can never, never tell. Sapagat nakita po yan sa impurity ng kanyang buhay. Nakikita yan sa kanyang patutuo, sa kanyang testimony. Not only when he is among Christians, but when he is outside the church. Ano ang ating buhay? Oh, I wish that every single member of the Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church is a genuine, pure Christian. No adulteration. Sincere in all that. Honest. Alam niyo ba na ang puti ay madaling madumihan? Kaya, kaagad makikita mo na hindi na malinis. Kapag ginamit mo ng isang araw, maghapon, medyo kulay abo na ang puti. Because it is easily uh, con- uh, contaminated with dirt. And when you, begin, when you begin to notice that in your own white uh, raiment, mayroon na mga dots, mayroon mga color. Huh? Yung mga discolorization na yan, ibig sabihin yan, mayroon mga ibang mga bagay na napunta dyan. You see? Alam nyo, kahit na sa larangan po ng kaligtasan, ang mga ilustrasyon na ginagamit sa atin ng Bible ay laging white, white, white. Hindi ba ko ba isaya? Sabi ng propeta, Come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your heart be as scarlet, these shall be as white as snow. And there is nothing in this world, my friend, that can be whiter than snow. If they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Yung mga wool na galing doon sa tupa, syempre kapag sila ay naglalakbay dyan sa parang, ang kulay nila ay abuhin na, brown. Pero alam nyo ba, kapag sinishare yan, ang, ang, ang fleece niya na inaalis, pagkatapos nililinisan, it's just pure white. Pure white. Kaya doon itinulad mga kapatid ko, ang paglilinis ng Diyos sa ating mga buhay, sa ating mga puso, we become as white as snow. Now of course, that is not supposed to be taken literally. Because even the scientists cannot explain that. How can the blood of Jesus Christ which is red can make anybody white. Huh? That cannot be explained scientifically. The blood of Jesus Christ is red. 
And my friend, you pour white on a, you pour blood on the white raiment, what happens? Sira na ang damit mo. You cannot make that white again. But the blood of Jesus Christ can make us as white as snow in our hearts, in our souls. Somebody asked me the question, Pastor, parang inconsistent sinasabi ng Bible. Ang dugo na ni Kristo ay lumilinis at lahat ng kasalanan at pinapuputi tayong parang nyebe. Paano yan? Well, sabi ko, nakakita ka na ba ng pulang baka? Iba-ibang kulay ng baka, may pula itim ng baka. At ang kanyang kinakain ay birding damo. Pero kapag kumuha ka ng gatas sa kanila, anong kulay ng gatas? Puti. Now, even in the natural process, God can make that white. Although, it uh, involves a lot of other colors. But my friend, Jesus Christ can make us as white as snow. You see? As white as wool. That speaks of our purity in life. My brethren, no matter what happens, no matter where we live, we might be surrounded by evil uh, people around us. We might be surrounded by, you know, a civilization that is so filthy. But our white raiment that we have received from the Lord Jesus Christ is free from stain. You know that? It cannot be stained. Because it is pure white. You know? Tapunan mo naman ng alibo, yung dudulas yan dyan. Yan eh. You know, I remember Brother Agravante, when he was preaching in Bicol, he used an illustration. Alam mo yung gabi? Sabi niya itong dahon ng gabing ito, pareho ito ng buhay kristyano. Mm-hmm. Buhusan mo ng tubig, hindi nababasa dumudulas lang ang tubig doon sa dahon ng gabi. Kung anong mayroong uh, milagro, ang dahon na yan na, na hindi nababasa, hindi tinatabla ng mga mancha. Sabi niya, mga kapatid, katulad dyan ng purong buhay ng isang kristyano na nililis na nga ng dugo ni Kristo. Hindi na tayo kailanman tatablan ng anuman defilement sa buhay na ito. Although we can still fall in some sins, but we can never lose the purity of life in the sight of God because we have been made pure by the blood of Jesus Christ. This is another condition of a Christian life that should be desired by every sincere believer in Jesus Christ. You know, when you feel so shabby in the afternoon you feel like going to the shower and cleaning up yourself you use deodorant soap and many other things to clean you up and after your shower you go into your dressing room what kind of garments would you like to put on I don't know about the ladies but for men like me I would like always to wear white Underwears, you know that? White. But hey, I do not have to show them to you tonight. But I always like to wear white undershirts. Puti yan. Malinis yan. Abay, nakita ko na jogging doon. Sa Amuranto. Nung araw, mahilip ako mag-jogging ng araw-araw. Kasama ko nung araw sa Seni. Sabi niya tayo, yung lalaki niyan, ganun lang ang suot niyan, araw-araw. Palaging dark brown ang kanyang suot. Halos naka-underwear, hanggang dito sa pinaka-short-short talaga, ang kanyang short. Dark brown na ang kulay. Sabi ko, mahala yung buka, pito ang kanyang-kanyan. Araw-araw nagbibis, parpero ang kulay. Ganyan. But it doesn't really look very neat. 
Boy, but if you walk in there tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock, will you come with me and walk down there at the quadrangle just for one hour to exercise yourself? It's good for your health. Huh? Although you might have to force yourself to wake up and get up at 5 o'clock and go there. But after one hour, you have made a little exercise for your body, you will never regret it. It's good for you. Bukas ng alas Okay, white raiment. Doctors always wear white raiments. Nurses, hospital personnel, they always wear white raiment. You see? Because they are a symbol of cleanliness. They are a symbol of purity. Listen, we want every believer in Jesus Christ to be pure in heart. Oh, I can elaborate more of this. We can never, never speak too much about a holy life, life, a holy living, a pure living. Every day in our life, we ought to look at ourselves and say, Am I still wearing a white raiment in the sight of God? Am I clean in the sight of God? The third one. Anong sabi rito? Pangatlo. Eye salves. To clean up your eyes. And make you see better. Alam niyo sa Old Testament time, lalo na rosa aklat ng Deuteronomy, itong eye salve na ito ay may korte ito. Nakorte ng bilog yan at tinatapal sa panta, sa mata. Moist po yan tinatapal sa mata. At, pababayaan mo muna siya, mag, magbabad yung mata mo sa eye salve na yan. Then you take it out, you can see better. Malinaw na ang paningin mo. But in the New Testament, when they establish that, uh, you know, that uh, Laodicean Medical Center, Yung eye salves ay ba na ang forma? Naging powder na. So that those people who might have eye problems, they would take that powder and drop into the very iris of their own eyes. And after that, let it go for some minutes and then wash, and they can see better. That is what the Bible calls eye salve. Hmm? Ayawang ko lang ngayon kung mayroon pang ganyan. Sa mga butika, nakakabili tayo ng mga morin, mga kung ano-ano, pandrap sa mata, panghugas, pangalis ng mga puwing, at lahat ng mga foreign matters sa mata natin, at nakakita tayo ng buti. But my friend, this is a, also a figure of speech. What does this refer to? It refers to spiritual discernment. Now, the Bible says that the eye is the window of our soul. It is capable of seeing, perceiving, things like that. But the perception, my friend, refers to the spiritual perception. That means our understanding. Discernment. Naunawaan natin sapagat hindi lamang sa pamagitan ng ating matang physical, but we understand by our minds. Alam mo, mas serious po ang sinasabi ng Biblia tungkol sa mga isipang binulag ng Diablo. There are minds that have been blinded by the devil so much so that even their eyes are open, they cannot see the truth because their minds have been blinded. Did you know, my friend, that every believer in Jesus Christ is given the power to discern things? If they will just exercise that power, they are able to see as I preached unto you some time ago, reading between the lines. You do, you do not just read the letters and understand the meaning of the word, but you read the message. You are made to understand what God wants you to do when God wants to speak to you. A young lady came to me in Bataan and she said, Pastor, I attended your church in Tatalon, our church in Tatalon. 
several months ago. And I heard you preach for the first time. And I did not know you. You did not know me. But when you preach, you spoke about me. You struck me in my own heart. You describe exactly my spiritual condition. God used your message to make me see myself. In that case, God applied that his spiritual eye saw for her to see. And she was not offended because she was made to see. You see? All right. Now, every time that you come to church to attend a service like this, God would make you to see yourself. God would make you to see the kind of faith you have. So that if you see that there are contaminations there in your faith, you are willing to be made pure by fire. If you look at your raiment, you see that it is not decent enough in the eyes of God. You pray that God will make you as white as snow. You remember the prophet Isaiah in the sixth chapter of his book. When his uncle King Uzziah died. He went, he went to the temple and according to his testimony, he saw the Lord. High and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. The whole temple was filled with the kind of glory of God that he could not even look up. Then he began to see himself and began to confess, Woe is me! For I am a man with unclean lips and I am dwelling in the midst of people with unclean lips. Woe is me! Have you ever experienced that way in your life? When I first heard Pastor Hoagie preach to us the gospel there in Ligada Street, he preached to me personally. Although I have a hard time trying to understand his English, but I understood the message. I began to say in my heart, Woe is me! This preacher knows me personally. He's talking about my life. And that Saturday morning, that Saturday night, I came forward to be saved. You see, understanding. You know, there are times when there are people who would come to a church and it takes time for them to understand what they would hear. It takes time for the truth to dawn on them. Have you ever entered into a dark room somewhere where you do not need to switch on the light and you enter into the dark room? You get, totally, you cannot say anything there. You grope around and you cannot say anything there. Because the pupil of your eye has not yet adjusted to the darkness of the room. But when you begin to stay there for a few minutes, you begin to look around. The light enters into your pupil and goes back into the cornea of your eye. Then you begin to adjust yourself into the room. Then you begin to look around. You see some figures here and there. You can see some furniture here and there. Because... It now dawns on you what is around you. In the same way, the first time you look at the Word of God, you begin to read, even though you might be an intelligent person. You begin to read. I cannot understand this. Because your heart is still dark. Your heart is still darkened by sin. It is darkened by ignorance. It is darkened by false religion. It is darkened by worldviews. It is darkened by many things so that you cannot see the truth. But then the Holy Spirit begins to work in you. The Holy Spirit begins to illumine your mind. And you, you begin to see the truth. You begin to see the light. And now you can read your Bible anywhere. Any passage in the scripture you can read that and you enjoy it. Why? Because your mind is already lightened. You can see. You can understand. And I'm saying Apostle Paul. It's so 1 Corinthians 2.14. But the natural man. Now who is the natural man? The natural man is the unsaved man. 
the unregenerate man. The man who has never, never received Jesus Christ by faith. The man who has never been saved. That is the natural man. Eh? Man, you can find men like this even in the upper echelon of our society. Maybe down into the gutter of sin in our society. For as long as they belong to the category as natural men, they cannot understand. Sabi ni Paul, but the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God because these are foolishness unto them. Neither can they know them because these spiritual things are spiritually discerned. In other words, the things of the Spirit, my friend, is spiritually understood. And therefore, you must have a spiritual discernment in your mind in order to understand what the Bible says. No natural man can ever understand the Word of God. Oh, in my years of ministry, I've come across people who would boast of their education, their ingenuities, and wisdom, and knowledge of everything. But when I begin to present to them the simple plan of salvation, they cannot understand it. Asabi nila, bakit ba sa inyo mga baptist napakasimple ng kaligtasan? Oh, it's so simple. I want to have something that is more complicated because, you know, I'm an educated man. I said, when you begin to complicate the simplicity of the gospel, you make it more confusing. Just take it as it is. Like God has revealed to us. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Trust Him as your Savior and you will receive the gift of eternal life. Repent of all your sins. And the Bible says that God is just and faithful to forgive you of all your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What are we trying to drive to? Listen. We ought not to be satisfied with living a mediocre Christian life. Because you say, well, you know, wala well, naman ang nagsisimba dyan kung linggo. I am always there. The pastor should not insult me like that. I also pray at home. I also read my Bible. I study my Bible. Listen, we ought never to be satisfied by those things. They are what the Apostle Paul thinks, elementary things. The people in Galatia were people who were uh, converted under the preaching of the Apostle Paul. And he told us in his book, that when he trained his Galatian Christians, he started in the spiritual area of their life. But when Paul left and went to other places, established other churches, some of these Judaizers crept into the church and began to go back to the elementary religion, such as circumcision, keeping the statutes and the commandments of Israel, the traditions and the superstitious belief of Israel. And Paul, when he heard that, he wrote a very, very sharp letter to the Galatian people. He said, he said Who hath bewitched you to believe something that I never told you, told you? He said, If any man has come to you and preached to you another gospel than that ye have heard from me, let him be a curse. He said, You foolish Galatians. He began in the spirit. Now you're going to be pure and genuine in the flesh. Boy, he really put down the works on them. He really lowered the boom on them. But I believe that the book of Galatians was not just written to the Galatians. Although it was written to them primarily because of the problem they had during those days. But I believe it is so also written for us for our learning if we were in the same situation the apostle Paul could have spoken straight to us oh foolish Catalonians oh foolish Filipinos who hath bewitched you to believe that I have never told you who has bewitched you to believe another gospel he said I would like you to know this this persuasion that made you to believe something that is wrong, cometh not from him, 
that converted you from darkness into light. This persuasion came from the devil. Because there is, un, there is no other force, my friend, opposite to God's power than the power of the devil. That is why we do not just pronounce something. You know, you can mix colors. If you mix red and black, what's the result? Gray. Diba? You mix this color and that color, it will result to something else. But it can never result to white. What is he talking about? Tayo mga Kristiyano, huwag tayo magmix lang ng color, ng spiritualidad. Nasabihin natin, Oy, Pastor, alam mo, hindi laman lahat ng relihiyon ay masama. Kaya ako'y pumupunta ro'n, ako'y namumulot ng mabuti. Bagay, tinatapong ko yung masama. Ang dami ko ng beses narinig ang ganung uri ng filosofiya. Sabi ko, well, if that's the case, you come to the lighthouse, Bible of Tisho, wala kang itatapon doon kasi puro mabuti yun eh. Wala kang itatapon. Bakit ka mamumulot sa basuran? Isang kumpul tambak na basuran para makakuha lang ang isang saging na pwede pang kainin. Samantala, ang dami magagaling ng saging dyan sa palingki na hindi ka nahuhukay sa basuran para makakuha ka ng isang saging. You don't bury your head in a pile of garbage just to look for one good banana. You go to the place where you can get good bananas. You know that? Listen. Our bananas at the lighthouse by the Baptists are good. They're all good. You have nothing to throw away. Eh siguro kung ikaw ay masilan masyado, nasanay ka roon sa latundan, at ang kinaan mo rito'y bunguran, mamimili kan talaga. Oh, hindi ako sanay kumain ng uh, bunguran eh. Latundan lang ang akin. That is as far as bananas are concerned. Rather, referring to my friend, are the things that we teach people from the Word of God. They are all good. Nothing to be refused. Kapon kumain kami doon sa bataan na lahat ng bawal sa katawang ko. Pastor, bawal to sa'yo. Sugpo na malalaki. Wow! alimango ang tataba at kung ano-ano pa mga pagkain na talagang bawal sa akin. Kakain po ba kayo? Bayo, oo, oh, nanalangin muna tayo. Ha? Sabi ng Bible, there is nothing to be refused if it be accepted with thanksgiving. You believe that? Nung araw may alinlangan ako dyan, pero I believe that now. For as long as you do not overdose yourself with those things. Huh? But my Bible tells me that there is nothing to be refused. God has created all things pure. And if it is designed for people's consumption, nothing to be refused. If it be received with thanksgiving. You better thank God first. You better ask the Lord to bless the food. Panginoon, gamitin mo po ito, alimangong ito, para sa kalusugan ng aking tuhod. Sabi ron sa buko Romans, if you eat in doubt, patilikado ka. If you eat in doubt, eh, alam mo nung mga panahon ng Old Testament, nagiinsultuhan yung mga tinatawag na uh, mga carnivores doon sa mga vegetarians. Sabi ng mga vegetarians, ah kami, Uro kami gulay lang. Kasi, walang sakit dyan. Ha? Walang sakit dyan. Nakakita na ba ko yung sabadistang nabubuhay ng isang daan, dalawang daang taon? Puro gulay ang kinakain? Ngayon kung sila nalulungkot kumaya ng karne, yung gulay gagawin lang para isurang karne. Ginigiling nila para bubuoyin at pipirituhin para ang hamburger din ang itsura niyan. Ha? That is hypocrisy. You know that? They do not want to eat meat because they say, masyadong contaminate dyan, bawal sa, sa mga Kristiyano yan. Oy, gulay lang kami. Well, I, I'm not looking down on people who can afford only to buy vegetables and eat vegetables. That's okay. 
Pero kung minsan kahit ando ko na sabi, medyo haluan mo naman ng konting meat ang pagkain mo para mayroon kang protein. Di ba? Ha? Kung puro lang ka, kakainin mo ay mga yung tinatawag na fibrous uh, pagkain, baka walang mga tira sa bituka mo, pati bituka mo lalabas yan. Masyadong fibrous. Well, you be eating balanced food, ka nga. But in the spiritual area of our life, my friend, we ought to see to it that our life, our faith, our testimony, our understanding is like gold tried in the fire. It's like white raiment that our nakedness might be covered and we wouldn't be ashamed. It is like our eyes being blurred sometimes and we begin to apply that spiritual eye salve. Then we open our eyes and we can see clearer, better. You see? I don't think there is any glass or lens that can ever take the place of God's spiritual eyes out. Diba? Mahari magkonsulta ka sa pinakamagaling na optometrist dito sa Metro Manila. Ayawang ko lang sa akin. Ang dami ko ng salamin dyan na ipon. Ang dami ko ng pinagawang salamin, puro mali. Pag ginagamit ko, nahihilo ako. Gumagalaw ang lupa. Sumasakit ang ulo ko. Hindi ako makabasa ng matagal. Sadya na yung ginawa. Sinukat pa ang mata ko. Ha? Binalik ko roon sa opisina ng gumawa. Sabi ko, hindi tama yung ginawa ng lensit sa akin. Nahihilo ako at gumagalaw. Ang buong langit, buong mundo gumagalaw. May ikot. Ha? Sabi niya, Pastor Madali, yan, ganito yan. Ginanon, ginanon. Yan. Adjustment lang yan. Sinuot ko. Medyo lumino nga ng konti. Pero ngayon, ganun din ang labas eh. Malabo rin. Bumili na lang akong reading glass na maliit na hindi sinukat sa mata ko. Yung salamin ang sinukat ko sa mata ko. Nung makita kong malinaw, yun ang binili ko. Yun ngayon ang aking ginagamit na pang-aral sa gabi na hindi sumasakit ang aking ulo. But my friend, kuminsan ang ating ulo'y sumasakit sa pagbabasa ng Biblia. Kahit na malinaw ang ating paningin, 2020 vision, Bakit? Wala tayong spiritual eye salve. You read your Bible at home, boy, the first thing that you you feel is you feel so sleepy. Nakakatulog kang magbabasa ng Bible. Ha? Mag-pray ka man, you determine yourself, I'm going to pray for one hour. You bow your head and you start praying. When you get to the middle of your prayer, you start snoring. You would fall asleep. Hmm? You begin to have problems in your life. You can never, never understand why. You begin to ask God, Lord, why, 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 why? I think when God gives us the spiritual eye salve, begin to understand even the greatest problem that comes alive. Lord, I understand. I know why. Hmm? You are just testing my faith. You are just giving me more knowledge. More experience so that I can help other people who might not have this knowledge that I have. He have gone into this uh, seminar on soul winning. I think he have understood more how to win people to Christ. He memorized all the scriptures that were given to you in that kit, soul winning kit. The question is, are you applying it? Are we using it? You know, if you have knowledge and you don't apply it, then the Bible says you are not wise. Wisdom comes when you apply what you know. The knowledge that you have, you apply that this wisdom. That is what we call discernment. It was quoted a while ago, that they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. He who is the wise. The Bible says, He that winneth souls is wise. Huh? Where do you get that wisdom? From the universities? No, sir. You get that from God. But you have to apply it. You might be here tonight, my friend. I did not address you in this message. 
because primarily this is addressed to the believers in Christ so that they can have a pure life like gold tried in the fire like white raiment they can have the full knowledge and understanding of God's word by applying the spiritual eyes out. But tonight, you may say, you know, Pastor, I cannot understand the things that I'm talking about. Well, I'm not surprised. You cannot really understand. But I want you to understand this. You are here tonight. You stand before God as a lost, hell-bound sinner. You cannot save yourself. You have no ability to even change your own life. The only thing that you can do tonight, my friend, is to come to Jesus and exercise just a simple faith, believing that He is the Savior of your soul, that He died on Calvary's cross to redeem you from the damnation of hell. He gave His life for your salvation. Now, it's up to you to make your own decision whether you're going to receive Christ by faith or not. It is your own decision whether you're going to get out of the door and go home still lost in your sins. But I would uh, encourage you to come to Jesus tonight. If you have never obeyed Jesus Christ in the waters of baptism, you may be a Christian but you are not a member of this church. You only become a Baptist when you are baptized. You know that? Or maybe you are a Christian. You think you are. Oh, I have trusted Christ my Savior. I have been baptized. But you cannot even control your passions. Bakit ganong pastor ako? Hindi ko makontrol ang aking mga gusto. Huh? Kung gusto kong lumayas, gusto kong lumayas, do wala makapagpipigil sa akin. Kung gusto kong maging rebelde, wala makapipigil sa akin. Bakit ganoon ang buhay ko, Pastor? There are some impurities in your life. So that you must allow yourself to be purified. Listen, this book is a purifying book. It can make you pure within. If you will just believe what it says and obey its directions, God is going to make you pure in your heart. And you can come out as pure gold. Listen, our desire is to make you a real, real, genuine believer in Jesus Christ. Shall we stand together? Every head bowed and right close tonight. If God has spoken to your heart tonight, my friend, I'd be happy. If God has made you to see your own life tonight, then I'd be most happy. Because that is the very purpose of this message tonight. But then it's up to you to act on it. Heavenly Father, we thank you again, Lord. For your word that has made us to realize the uh, weakness of our faith. That has made us to realize that we need to be tried in fire so that our faith may come out like gold. Thank you for making us to realize our spiritual raiment. That they are not really clean. They are not pure. Oh God, please give us that pure white raiment that our nakedness might be covered. That when you look at us, dear God, you look at us, you can see the righteousness imputed to us by Christ, not our own. Then, dear God, make us to understand more things in your word. So that when you begin to read and study your word, it gives us more wisdom and more knowledge and more understanding so that we can help others also. Father in heaven, we pray now that you'll make every member of this church pure as can be, genuine as can be. No hypocrites, no half-baked Christian, 
No insincere believer. No compromises, dear God, but make us to be pure in your sight. Lord, we know that if this will ever happen to us, we will be the most faithful Christians, the happiest Christians, the more sincere and consistent Christians, because our hearts have been made pure, our lives and our minds. Father in heaven, we want to glorify your name in our lives, in the kind of service that we perform for your glory. We want to glorify your name, dear God. We want to, to be seen by the world as a different kind of people so that they can see something in us that they do not have. Bless us, Lord, as we give this invitation. Help people to know their needs and give them humility that they might be willing to commit their lives to you, their God, and say, Lord, I'm repenting of all my sins, O oh God. I want to be as white as snow, as white as wool, as pure as gold tried in the fire. Because we ask these things in Christ's name and for his sake alone. Amen.